Hello, so it's been a while. I needed a little break and I'll probably be a little slow for a while because of um, OHBM. Anyway, I have one final video about the FSL pipeline. So I wasn't originally going to do this. I had mentioned doing it along the way, but then recently, earlier this week, um, I saw on Twitter that they were broadcasting a talk by Russ Poldrack that he was giving at um, in London, I forget where. And part of his talk, he, he mentioned how he's been going through manuscripts, people's papers in PubMed, and trying to decipher how they thresholded their statistics. And um, it was pretty sad because a lot of the times, even though people would write some text, it wasn't clear what they did. And with all of the attention there has been recently to false positives and thresholding your statistics, et cetera, I think we could do a lot better in um, our methods sections. So it turns out this is pretty easy to do with FSL because everything's there. And uh, you can write it in approximately five minutes, maybe a little bit longer. Uh, definitely once you've done it one or two times, it'll come pretty quick. So I just wanted to show you how to do that. So basically all you have to do is go through the reports that are produced after you run each stage of your analysis. So this is in the HTML output and whoops, you'll see that there's um, you know, a section for the registration, the pre-stats and the stats and the post stats. So when you click on each of these, the top has a, um, a little blurb about what you did and you just copy and paste that into your manuscript and you're done. It even has all the references. So really easy. But of course, you'll need to add your own stuff. So for example, you're going to have to format the references, obviously, uh, depending on what you're using. I use LaTeX, so I always have a bib file. And typically, I have an old bib file laying around with all these references in it. You also need to add the specifics about your regressor setup. So this is when you're going to definitely go over five minutes. And this is especially important for the level one analyses. So I, I would recommend doing this right after you've run your level one analyses, actually, because once you see how you copy and paste this text, it's super easy. Um, and the reason I promote doing it early on is because uh, you'll find when you're writing the uh, paper and you're describing your model that you're now thinking about it really clearly. And it might, you might realize you made some mistakes. So I've definitely seen this occur multiple times with myself and with other people. They'll be like, oh, did I add the motion parameters? And then they go back and check and see that they didn't. Or um, they realized there was this extra task and they forgot to model it. So it went in the baseline, which is not good. So they had to go back and change the model or that their parametric modulation setup didn't make sense. So they had to go back and redo the model. So I highly recommend writing this up uh, early on. But definitely a little bit of a break between running the model and writing up. So it's, it's probably the break will be built in. So you'll set up your template for the level one analysis and then you'll monkey around with getting the scripts to work to run all the level ones. And by the time they've run and you've run the QA, then write this. Because that's, that's like a day or two break from when you've set up your model and then you'll be able to think more clearly. Also BBR, the, that was the image registration, the boundary-based image registration, which is used to align the functional data to the subject structural. And this is not described in the HTML output, so you will have to edit that yourself. And here is the reference for that. So actually it's from Grieve and Fischl, uh, who, anyway, yeah, they're out in Boston. But anyway, yeah, so you wanna give them credit as well. So let's do it. So I'm going to walk you through the three stages and then do, I'm, I'm not probably not going to type out all of the specifics for the model setup, but I'll give some general things that you'll want to include. Okay, so I have an editor here and over here I have three tabs. So this first tab is for the level one analysis and this is the report.html. I apologize, this is copied from a different machine, so none of the images, the images are all broken, or some of them are. That's fine. Um, so basically start from the left and work your way to the right. So I start with registration, and you'll see this first sentence is repeated in each of these blurbs, but we'll grab it for this first part, 
And then the rest of it, registration to high resolution structural and or uh, standard space images was carried out using FLIRT. So technically that's not true, as I just said, for the um, image registration of the uh, functional data to the subject structural. That was using BBR, so we're going to edit that. Uh, but FLIRT is used for the subject structural to the, uh, uh, the MNI template. And on top of that, uh, FNERT was used, and that's what the second part is, is talking about. So I'm going to copy this, paste it here, and I'm going to edit this. Registration to high resolution structural and or standard space. So registration to, first let's, let's add the bit about BBR. Registration of the functional data to the high resolution structural image was carried out using the boundary whoops based uh, registration wow algorithm and then you would put the the uh, reference here so what I say grieve and official uh, 2009. Okay, and then I'm going to back this up. Registration of high resolution of the high resolution structural to standard space was carried out using FLIRT. And then I'm going to say and was then further refined using FNERT. So I just had to delete a little bit because that sentence was trying to cover both the registration of the structure, I'm sorry, the functional to subject structural and structural to MNI, and then they add this extra bit about FNERT. So I just deleted that. So then copy all these references. Oops. And later on, you'll have to fix that yourself to, uh, and then make a little note that you want to get the grieve and official 2009. Okay. All right, so we're done with the image registration. And the only thing you could clarify is that this was a 12 degree of freedom image registration, but you have to use a 12 degree of freedom with FNERT, so that might be implied. Okay. Going back, so now I'm going to click on the pre-stats tab. So again, this first sentence is going to be repeated each time. This is just saying you used FSL. So we're going to go to the second sentence and on. So this is just talking about motion correction using MICFLIRT, BET for the brain extraction, spatial smoothing using a, a full width half maximum 5 millimeter, grand int mean intensity normalization, high pass temporal filtering, etc. So Copy and paste that to here and get your references. Some of these references might be repeated, so you can check that later. Usually your um, bibliography tool will do that for you. Done. Stats. So this is the one where you're going to have to do a little work on your own. So definitely you want this time series statistical analysis was carried out using film. So that's the pre-whitening. And then get that reference. And then right here, you can say time, the time series model included. And then what you're going to need to put is describe your regressors, the HRF you used. And, and when you describe the regressors, be, be very clear about the duration of your trials. Um, modulation if you used it, um, the HRF you used, um, meaning uh, gamma or double gamma. You should use double gamma. So if you go back and you, um, for this part, you'll have to load up the design.fsf into the GUI to see what you used. If you use the gamma instead of the double gamma, um, you'll want to make note of that. 
And that information won't be given here, but you, you can at least recall what you modeled. So here we modeled go, success, and I could then describe each of these regressors uh, that I included the temporal derivatives. Um, uh, nuisance regressors. So typically those would be um, the extended motion parameters and also whether you included indicators functions to model out single TRs with ex um, identified to have excessive motion according to frame-wise displacement greater than 0 0.9. Um, and maybe I could even uh, further explain that this is a separate regressor for each TR. Let's be descriptive. Ah. Uh, anyway, so you just, you get the idea. You have to go through and describe all of your regressors. So that is up to you to do. And I'm not distributing this because this won't necessarily match your analysis. This matches my FSL analysis, but if you use slightly different pre-processing, your text will be slightly different to reflect what you did. Okay, so that is that. And let's see, stats. Post stats, I didn't run any. So I'm done with my level one analysis. So I could go to, and post stats, that's just thresholding. I only threshold at the group level. So second level analysis. Um, oops, is this? Yep, so um, I don't need to go up to the main page. Stats, so this explains the model that was used. Higher level analysis was carried out using a fixed effects level. So this just says generic higher level. Um, I'm going to be more descriptive and say the second level analysis. So I say the second level analysis combining, uh, I don't have a uh, spell check on, so don't judge. Combining runs within subject was carried out using fixed effects model by forcing a random effects variance to be zero. Done. Get my references. And then you would also describe what this model did. So in my case, um, uh, I could just say here, which averaged um, contrast estimates over runs within subject. So that's enough. Um, they know it was a column of ones based on that. Done. And let's see, that was the stats. There's no post stats again. I didn't do any thresholding. On to the group level. So here you have to go to the registration summary. There's nothing there. So results, I need to click on a um, feet directory. Actually, you know what? I should have explained that better here. This was actually the report within the cope1.feed directory. If I go, let me show you how to get there. If you start from the report in the uh, main directory. So if you go to results, so this is just the report that's in the, the second level G feed directory. So if you go to results, then you have to click on one of your contrasts. Both contrasts will have the same processing, so it doesn't matter but you have a little reminder of what your design was, so you can use that to guide your description. And then once you click on that, you get the post stats, and then you can click on stats, and that's where you can get the text about the fixed effects. So I'm gonna do the same thing for the third level. So I clicked first on results, and then I click on higher level feet results, and then I have these, <laughs> this uh, no results, map, which is fine, but then again, I just grab, whoops, whoops, stats first. I think I'm in post stats. So the flame description, uh, 
I can say the group analysis, done, get those references. Yeah, these these uh, guys, their, their H indices are through the roof, deservedly. Um, okay, and then post stats, finally, the thresholding thing, the thing that uh, Russ was just pointing out people don't have, and all it is, oops, is this sentence, and this is all you need. They're thresholding using clusters determined by Z greater than 2.3 and a corrected cluster significance threshold of P equal to 0.05. It, just copy it right out of here. If this is the only thing you copy out of here, that would be great. And then the reference. All right. So that's it. It looks like a ton of text, but who cares? You should have a ton of text in your method section. And it took a little longer than five minutes because I was explaining as I go, but it will be pretty quick. I mean, what this, I just did this live, the video is less than 20 minutes. So that's pretty impressive for writing your method section. It's also great if you try to write regularly, which I highly recommend. Um, it's, it's a great low hanging fruit writing day to sit down and write your method section and then format these guys. Um, yeah, that's it. So again, don't forget to add the information about the models, especially the group level model. If you had a ton of regressors, you have to explain what those were for the first level model. Be very, very clear. Um, you should be able, I mean, give it to a friend and have them read it. A friend who's not familiar with your design, but hopefully has some experience in imaging analysis, have them read it and describe back to you what you did to test the accuracy. So, okay. Sorry. I just had to edit this last bit. So there's probably a little jump. Anyway, we did it. We're done. But what I need to add is that hopefully in light of, um, the Anders Eklund paper with others, that uh, you'll be using randomize to do your final thresholding. It's fine, start with the, the a random field theory based thresholding because it's just gonna, it's easy just to have that run. But for your final result to be more careful about controlling your false positive rates because even with FSL, they are inflated. Hopefully you saw that I annotated that video. Originally it looked like FSL would always be conservative, but that's not the case. It is about the same as SPM or any of the other random field theory based approaches. So if you use randomize, all you have to do is say that you use randomize, which uh, thresholding strategy you used. Hopefully you're using the TFCE, which is minus capital T and um, how many permutations you used. And I would recommend 5,000. So, right. So use that instead of the last part that we just copied and pasted. So hopefully I'm trying to, I'm trying to push more people in the direction of non-parametric thresholding. So that's it. Thank you very much. Please join the Facebook group or you could follow on Tumblr or on Twitter or all three. And I really appreciate your time and hope you have a good day.